Howdy, friends. This is Adam Ganser stopping by just to thank you so much for listening to us and all of our precious projects on the Small Beans Patreon. And if you have a couple extra bucks and haven't signed up for our $5 tier, I wanted to let you know there is some of the best entertainment anywhere on the internet just waiting for your listening pleasure. This includes episodes of I'll Show You Mine If You Show Me Yours, Spiel Boys, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and coming soon some very secret but very awesome projects we can't wait to show you. If you got the money and you feel like it, we'd sure love to have it. And thanks so much for listening to Small Beans. It's time for Dad's now. Look, it's all about dads. I don't want you talking about anything but dads. Cause it's all dads now. Yeah. It's inside dads. It's back, baby. You thought we went away? You thought, just like a father. Just you like your father. We went out for cigarettes and to never return. We're back, baby. With cigarettes. <laughs> With cigarettes. Cigarettes for sure. everyone. <laughs> for all the kitties. That's right. It's Inside Dads, the return, the fifth mm-hmm. episode. Hey, pat yourself on your back. What, what way to be here? Hey there, champ. Yeah. Hey, sport. Hey, sport. I'm Abe Epperson, and I'm here with David Bell. Hi. And uh, we're, if you haven't heard, if you haven't listened to the first four episodes of this podcast, go back and you can do that. But basically what this show is, is that everyone's aware of the kind of the meme, the dad movie. Um, and Dave and I both realized early in our friendship that we're fascinated with dad movies. We love them. We can't get enough of them because we're like, you know, we're kind of dads ourselves. Neither of us are dads technically. None that I know of, Abe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. And we started talking over the last few years about what makes a dad movie. I mean, this is kind of internet discourse. Uh, and we're talking things like patriotism, the fact that it's like action adventure, the fact that there's sex prizes for the daddy characters, humble sacrifices, Being an underdog. Dead women. You know, but those are random details. Those are just things that are apparent in a dad movie. We want to isolate it into a genre. What exact things do all dad movies really do? And what makes it so daddy? Um, And that's what the show is. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. Very well put. Well, today's installment of Daditude is... One of the biggest dad films, I would argue, this bear would argue, Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. Oh my goodness, Abe. What did you think of this movie, I had never seen this movie before, but I I remember constructing the stand-up poster for it when I worked at Cinemark. I remember it coming out. I know it wasn't a success. I had I had I knew very little about this film and also just war and history. (laughs) It's where I fail as a dad. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so my assumption going into it was it was I was like, who is the master and commander? Are they the same person? Um, you know, is it mm-hmm. a sex thing? Is that the question of the movie? <laughs> uh, I assumed it was going to be two daddies basically fighting on a boat for Supreme Dad, which isn't exactly what it is. Um, mm-hmm. It is. Uh, it's I, not. I didn't think it was going to be about a ship doctor and captain like fighting over s- doing science. Um, I didn't think there was that going to be that much of the movie was going to be that. Um, there's so many like weird little subplots, um, mostly about like becoming, you know, the officer trying to grapple with becoming a, a big daddy. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the weird science subplots. But ultimately, what I boiled this down to, not to get ahead of myself, but like mm-hmm. this felt like it was science dad versus war dad, ultimately. And those are two distinct types of dads. That that's true. We have compu- like just like our last episode where we talk about the fugitive. There's two daddies vying for true dad da- dad quality. Yeah, but I think in this one there is a clear winner. I mean, it is Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe yeah. is dad, like yeah. uh, because he's the captain. He's the captain. Know? He's got the captain's ponytail. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, my does. God, that hair. I was like, I don't believe you about yes. the hair. It's like, I refuse to. This was apparently going to be part of a series, which I find amazingly naive of them and funny. Oh, absolutely. Because this was right when Pirates of the Caribbean came out, right? Oh, yeah. And it's very funny that they're like, what if we do that, but without like the pirates or the fun? <laughs> And you know they'll they'll want like five of these, and it's like no, we we really won't. Uh, That's right, yeah. yeah. It, because the stuff it's about is a lot more of an adult. Like so, they're based on books from right. what I read on Wikipedia, and they're it's all about the Napoleonic Wars. And I don't know, I can't answer your question about as to who's the master and commander. I think it's more of like a collection of seafaring stories that follow the Royal Navy, you know. Right. The master and the commander are different every time. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But the point is that it's more of like, that's the IP that they were trying to base this off of. So that's why I think they had that. They were like, oh, it's it's like books. We got so much material. They just got too excited. It's like doing a, it's like if you looked at Harry Potter and said, what if we do that? But like without magic. So it's just about a school. Like a stuffy yeah, school. That's right. Yeah. And, and There's like, no magic. Yeah. And, and it's like, this is a fine movie. Don't get me wrong. But it's mm-hmm. not a series. It's not a blockbuster series. It's, mm-hmm. it's not, you know, I don't know. They thought they were going to go on more adventures with fucking ponytail Russell Crowe. But that, oh. you know, it was never in the cards for them. I will say one thing is that uh, while your diagnosis of the film isn't off, it's missing a big part, which is that Russell Crowe, his main goal, his main thing is that he's like thrusting into the unknown with his like trusty group of seamen. Um, And like, so we got a crew and the whole time they basically at the beginning have this terrible loss against this uh the a french ship that's like faster and bigger than them um and they are on the run the whole time basically and trying to get out um so we can definitely unpack the specifics there but this film really is truly like when you look at the structure it's just a get out of dodge kind of thing like there's that's a little all. they sort of chase them too a little bit but they yeah. kind of they they try to get the upper hand so that they can mouse. get out yeah it's cat and mouse it's, it's the war, fugitive baby. It's the fugitive, but with old boats. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's dad catnip, right? It's war and yes. history. It's all the Ken Burns stuff together mm-hmm. in one movie. Yeah. One thing before we start getting in the details I wanted to mention is that kind of as an overview of the films that we've kind of covered so far, this film does something a little unique. And I wanted to, and, you know, maybe we can talk about it now, but we can talk about it as we go. This film does actually criticize like what we what we almost like it's the Ahab mentality that Russell Crowe has. You it know? does and it doesn't. You're right. It, it, that's the thing. It doesn't seem to learn anything from no, it. Which this is weird. movie learns nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's but it's sending anti dad messages because, you know, Paul Bettany is like criticizing Russell Crowe's pride, killing the crew and stuff like that. Usually dads are pretty infallible when it comes to like the mission. And this mi- this flirts with. Like maybe the mission isn't good, but then at the end it's like no 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 you you right you right well, the mission's great. It's like a it's the problem is they wanted to make more right so it's like a Batman film like the newest one where he's like is it bad that I'm Batman? Nah yeah. nah it's not bad. Let's Don't worry going. about it. Yeah and it's like yeah. well okay uh, like why why ask the question then you know then why um, yeah exactly yeah exactly but this All is right. I would I would argue this is less egregious just because it's about that journey and it's about finding a balance. I would say in the end, in uh, the end, there's a little bit of balancing, but it truly is just like, and then Russell Crowe made a decision and he was right. And, yeah. uh, and then that's, they'll find a word, baby. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's cross the threshold into our first like technical segment. I mean, segments are like whatever in the show, but let's get inside this dad and start talking about the movie moments and some of the tropes that make this movie a real dad movie. Yeah. Um, we I open. Want to start at the t- we open. Yeah. The the text. Are you starting at the text? Yeah, the text, baby. <laughs> the HMS Surprise. First of all, <laughs> dumb name for a ship. Stupid I know name. it's. I know it's a real name. I know it's a real ship. Dumb name. <laughs> yep. Twenty uh, twenty eight guns, one hundred ninety seven souls. That's the only the t- two things you need to know. 
That's the two things that matter, Dave. Souls and guns. <laughs> yep. And then also it follows up with it tells you little details about like what's going on. You're, you 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 know it's Napoleonic times and you got the English and the French, but the the orders from the HQ Britain are sink, burn, or take her as a prize, mm-hmm. referring to French ships. So their goal is to you're gonna die. <laughs> You're going to destroy it or you're going to take her. And it's just such a, I don't know if it, that, that that's as dead as it gets right there. It's like dead that's as like it gets. dad goals. Calling <laughs> boats. She has always felt dead to me. Yeah. Um, and then in these weird phrasings where it's like, I'm going to, this is my lady. I'm going to ride my lady around and destroy <laughs> yeah. other ladies or take them. Yeah, it's and like, it's like, what are we doing here? What, what does this even mean anymore? <laughs> yeah, sailing metaphors. Uh, they've just been out in the sun too long, man. They yeah. can't keep their shit straight. Uh, so the first shot I want to point out of Russell Crowe, where we actually, because they do a little lead oh, up. I and, need to, uh, there's a shot before that I need to point sure, out. Sure, take, yeah. Because the first shot, the first thing we see in the ship is a bunch of dangling sacks, <laughs> ball sacks with men in them sleeping. Yeah. Like little sleeping. testicles. <laughs> and then the next shot we see is their guns. It's the guns yeah. and souls, but it just, it was just like dangling sacks is the first thing you see. And I'm like, yeah, those are ball sacks. If I ever saw them. <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't change much from there for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Cause Russell Crowe's first shot, it starts with his belt being put on. Cause we all know a belt buckle is just like a metal that rails, rests on your dick. You right. Know? Yep. It's like, he's got a dick. Yeah, and then dick, it pan- dick tilts award, up to yeah. his face and it's like, that's your guy, Russell Crowe, baby. Yeah, uh, it's so good. What a way to start a movie! Yeah. Just like dicks out. Yeah, um, they all got their sailing top hats to look fancy. <laughs> we got a hobbit there. Uh, everybody's oh, yeah. in need of Billy daddies. Boyd. Yeah, Mary and or Pippin. I can't recall. I'm sure someone's fuming right now. Uh, they're the whole idea though is they're under attack, and he's like, "All right, I gotta give these orders. Uh, we gotta get closer to the threat." That's his first order. Yeah, make sure and make all also make sure our flag is up because that's important to Dad. Shit. Yeah, and it's the British flag, which I wanna I wanna talk about that real quick because I think Br- British is a hit against the daddiness of the movie <laughs> because where's the fucking American reverence? And then I looked into it a bit. It turns out that they changed when this movie takes place from the book mm-hmm. by eight years. Why? Because they didn't want them to be fighting the Americans in it. Because oh. that they are they knew. They were like, it's not dad to be British. Uh sorry. Sorry. You England. can't you can't yeah. Um there's America no has, we need American yeah. reverence for this. Um and so the least they could do is at least not make Americans the enemy. Right. But at the, well, yeah. It's and just also, very funny that they, ch- a difference of eight years, that's a big difference. And they mm-hmm. were like, we have to do it. Yes. Yeah. And there's also just this constant, you know, patriotism that happens in these movies where it's like, even if it's not America, it always has to be. I mean, it usually is because Hollywood, but it has to be some flag of some kind, some some yeah. authority that actually has ideals if they were to execute them properly. For sure. Often we find in daddy movies that there's a corruption there, but not in this movie, really. This movie is some dads alone out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and uh, daddies. I love that as he's so Russell Crowe, he's just scurrying around a ship. You know, just skulking, yep. checking out everyone's doing their job like a captain does. And at one point he gets a head wound in the first attack and he only notices it when he goes to talk to Paul Bettany, who's the doctor, about his men. He's like, how are the men? Because his wounds don't matter. And that's another kind of premise that I think is severely dead. Oh, yeah. It's just the idea that he, he oh, I didn't even notice I was bleeding. What? There's also, so we're talking about that first battle, right? I love yeah. that he has to put on his war hat. Um, yeah. The first thing is, did the watch, the like the lookout actually see it? And they have to get the big daddy, Russell Crowe, right? But mm-hmm. um, this movie does the, the one thing I know about war, about old war. There's only one thing I know. Is that you gotta get close. You gotta go mm-hmm. steady, 
Steady. Steady. Not yet. Steady. That's the first rule of war. Don't mm-hmm. don't shoot until everybody involved is uncomfortable. And the whites they, of their eyes. Yeah, yep. all the soldiers. They always cut the soldiers like shaking, like, oh, aren't we close? And that's everything from fucking this to Middle Earth, where it's like, mm-hmm. yep, you got to get close. That's the yeah. first rule of being a good that's war the first person. Rule. And sometimes it's better for them to get close to you, not you to get close to them. Because yes. I think that that subconsciously does something to our brains yep. as, in the audience. Because we're like, you're playing... They're going to fucking play by your rules, baby. Yeah. And that means even if you have nothing, you can't like ch- alter their behavior. You can at least wait. Yeah. Um, I and wanna... Usually it's because there's a plan involved, but not this time. No, he has no, no, no plan. It's just, you just got to be close. You just got to be close. That's it. You just got to be close. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Tons of gore. And I realized the thing about war movies is they're kind of gnarly, like Saving mm-hmm. Private Ryan and shit. And I think that's part of the daddiness of it. Is like it's war and it's also kind of a horror movie where you get to see like people's guts, but it's yeah, like a little bit of it's guts. like guts reverence where it's like it's respectful guts. Yeah, it's respectful guts because even yeah. in Saving Private Ryan, it's like it's almost too painful to look. Is the 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 premise always of that shot? Is yeah. like oh man, it's too brutal. Why why are we sacrificing our boys? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they even cut a boy's arm off at one point. Yeah. So God, they burn through children in this. <laughs> and and when the boy, I think after the boy is injured, injured, um, Russell Crowe says his father would have understood. He knew the life. His mother, however, and everybody chuckles. Um, <laughs> this is about a kid who's having his arm amputated, and it's very funny because it's it's the old, it's the war version of boys will be boys, right? Where it's like right. his dad knows, you know. Sometimes kids get into war scraps, you know. Moms don't <laughs> Lo- understand. Sometimes like, a kid l- loses his arm. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also important is that Paul Bettany at one point to like secure because he's also kind of mom a little bit because he's the doctor, he's the healer. So there is a sense of like he says to the boy after he's cut off his arm, I've never seen a braver patient. And I think on the sea, yep. like bravery and pride in it is a higher code than anything else, you know, like. You need to have pride in what you're doing. The thing was justified. This is a terrible loss, but it, we did, it, it, and this is the cost. But we did it because, goddamn it, we're right with the thing we're doing. Oh yeah, and they they lost fair and square. He says like yeah. they had the higher ground, they had the the wind, like he, he, they had the bigger ship. Like the whole thing is like the respect and reverence of the war, which That's is a, like yep. they they played by the rules and we lost. So and we lost, and that's how it goes. In fact, I wrote down a line because I was like, at one point, the you know, I don't know, ship a midshipman goes, sir, with respect, she's a ship out of our class, and that's important, yeah, to note because in all dad films, whomever is the threat, you are the underdog, D- they're we, insurmountable. You talked about this in the other ones, dads are underestimated, right? That's Always. the whole idea, yeah, because that's where we thrive, daddies are gonna do it with guile right um there's a scene also while they're kind of you know after the after everyone's shook by the first attack we get a trepanation scene uh, which is you know old timey drilling into the skull with paul bettany and he <laughs> he cuts a hole and he goes those are his brains yep. <laughs> and then he installs a little metal plate in his skull but um what I, why I want to pull out this scene is that there's a little bit of uh, like kind of discussion amongst the crew as they're watching it because they're like, oh, wow, something crazy is happening. And uh, man, Mary Andor Pippin says, you show him a beetle and he'll tell you what it's thinking. Yes. Because at this time, I think it's important. And this is something that because we haven't covered a ton of historical movies, but. A little bit of science is basically magic. Yes. And that's the thing with us as like audience members in the modern age is we all have some basic concepts of like science. Like if given the right tools, most of us could build like, I don't know, gunpowder. But like, that's it. Like, we don't know. We're not necessarily science nerds. Oh, we yeah. just like are ha- we're handy. Like, it's a part about being a, a dad is that you're like. 
you're good with your hands. You know, you can yeah. fix a so, thing. So this is science, dad, where we yeah. established war dad. And now we're like, and he's science, dad. And, and he's yeah. science, dad. There's a few daddy things I want to know. First of all, uh, in the scene before, there's a shot of a busted toilet. And as we talk about, dad's love pissing and shitting. Oh, piss and shit. Yeah, I yep. forgot about that. Um, there's a part where he 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 shows up the whiny stuffed shirts because you know dads hate bureaucrats but going to the surgery one thing that i flagged was dads love shoddy surgery <laughs> dads yes love ah, i don't have to go to the doctor we'll do it right here on the boat because yes. I, I know my dad has super glued several wounds shut in his lifetime <laughs> right yeah because my dad did like craftsman's shit so it's like when you get a nail through the hand what are you gonna do go to the hospital no you you handle that shit at home and that's Not sort of that, what's happening dude. here right where it's like Oh, moms don't understand. You just sometimes you got to saw kids arm off, you know, yeah. sometimes you got to do go on the, the top of the boat and fucking open a go through a guy's brain and fix it, you know, so, and I'm I, I'm going to double down on that just because like and jumping way ahead into the movie. But just because you're mentioning it, it feels like this is the time to mention it. There is a self surgery scene in this. Yeah. Like Die Very Hard and dead. the Fugitive. Uh, if you make a dad movie, a main character is like a doctor or has a wound and they have some medical training. They're doing self-surgery. Who among uh, us hasn't done self-surgery once in a while? Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, it's just like, what? Why is this such a thing? Yeah. Uh, why do dads love to, like stitching up our own wounds? Yep. Uh, and, you know, he has help from his trusty crew. But like uh, also, you know, Paul Bettany does it himself with a mirror like that, yeah. you know, cliche scene that we've Again, seen a who bunch among of us times. hasn't been called into a workshop <laughs> to, to uh, pull something out? So here's a detail that I love about this movie for no reason. I mean, it shows the camaraderie between Paul Bettany and Russell Crowe and how they have like a specific brotherhood. Uh, they play music together. They're in a fucking band. I, that's my dude. next note is like a good daddy's. They jam together after work. <laughs> yeah, dude. What do you think their band names What's their band name? Oh, fuck. Master and Commander. <laughs> no, they're Master and Commander. That's, we figured it out. That's what that that's, is referring that's the to. Band. You can buy the CD. Uh, I also like the SS Cocksmith. Oh, yep. That's yeah. good. Um, we already mentioned, yeah, they're fighting a bigger, better ship with new technology. I think new technology, because the guy brings in the model and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're saying. Guile. It's like in strategy. It's like Risk, the daddiest of board games. Um, that's all put together here, which is like, OK, we are the underdog, but we have spirit. We have Guile. They have new technology. Yeah. I also love this scene for exactly the reason you said that one point when it's because the idea is. Like someone saw their opponent's ship being built while they were like abroad and he brings and he builds a model because he witnessed it being built. And so this will lead to the understanding of their enemy because now they know kind of how it's it's structured and like where its weak points are yep. and help them defeat it. Now, at the end of that kind of interaction, Russell Crowe turns to these boys and he goes extra rum for these boys. Yes. Or whatever he says. And I think that that's another key feature because like not only is it just drinking like dads love drinking, but it's like there's a reward for out of the box thinking. Yes. He is like, I control the, you know, spigot of like of rum and I will let loose upon you because you did a good thing. And uh, there's like this meritocracy set up. The cook is uh, mad. The cook who looks like Eric Idle, looks like a fucking <laughs> Eric Idle character, is mad because it was his rum. The cook, I think, represents something important where he is always pessimistic. And yeah. so it's part of the dad attitude of like, no, we everything will be okay, is like Russell Crowe's thing. Which, you, you know, that's a very good commander thing, but it's a daddy mm. thing. Um, this Very is where so. they stop for supplies, which I noted. Uh, I but, laughed at this. Yeah, yeah. This is a very dad film history thing, which is racism, not not a problem. <laughs> Casual <laughs> racism. It's not like going out of its way to be like, look at these fuckers. It's just displaying, you know, like tribalism. But they're like, they're like, like totally okay with the natives. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, it's, right. it's the rewriting history so that hockeys are like totally fine. Oh, yeah. We were fine with everyone. Yeah. yeah even though we d we didn't make them all sick and murder yeah, 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 and yeah. take their land. No. Uh, we, I also love that the barter system is nonsense because they can't speak each other's languages. So they're all just. If you watch just the shots, they're just handing each other stuff. Like, I have an axe in my hand. Oh, you have a monkey? Yeah, I guess I'll take that trade. You know, it's just yeah. nonsense. 
and there's also a moment where Russell Crowe sees a beautiful island girl and he smiles, but you know, right? And I was a- like, the fuck is that gonna be? Like, that, right, they're, they're, I think they were like young women fucking love them. All right, moving on. Which we're the I, I don't want to spoil what we're gonna cover next, but there's a lot of this, which is like middle-aged rogue who's loved by young women and i'm like "Mm, yeah is he though (laughs) yeah and but also there it has this like modifier where it's like like oh look look i love random fucking but there's duty and war to be had and that and that kind of gets in like kind of like when we're talking about the fugitive gets in the uh, the way of like my job my wife and my job are my two most important thing. Yep. What was me? They're in conflict, you know? Ah, uh, to our wives and to sweethearts. May yep. they never meet. <laughs> May they never so, meet. With Jesus Sweethearts Christ. is the funniest way to make that joke. Because yeah. usually it's to our wives and girlfriends. May they never meet. It's the it's. I mean, we'll get to so the wholesome. dad joke, but it's such a yes. it's such a wholesome version of this dirty guy joke. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is that dinner, which I, there's a few things here. There's that toast. Yeah. Um, Russell Crowe there's tells a story about a bigger daddy, Lord Nelson. <laughs> yep. And in that story. One of the big things is about how he refused to wear a coat at night, saying his zeal for king and country kept him warm, which is one of the most dad things to do is what refuse refusing to admit your cold is a very dad thing, right? Yes. I having to wear a jacket. I'm not cold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not cold. Uh and I also love that he's like Lord Nelson is this great general and he wore he he wrote war books talking about strategy and stuff like that and he's seen as a great man. And Russell Crowe's like I ate with him twice and spoke with him actually both times. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's granddad. It's basically he gets respect at this table because dad has said this this dad is big strong dad right so everyone's like okay dad that i understand yeah <laughs> it all it's dad's all the way down it's um, dad's all the way down this dinner is probably the most dad scene because then so we daddy. get one of the most wish fulfillment moments which is yes. a naturally occurring dad joke yes um it's perfect my fucking god i lost my mind here so he sees two weevils on the uh table little maggots yeah and like any good jag j- joke it's drawn out way too long and right. he says to paul bettany like would you what would you say is the better of uh which oh, he says, like, let's, is, who would you bet better? on who's yeah. gonna yeah um and he's like they're both the same and he's like well if you had to and it comes down to him saying you have to pick the lesser of two weevils and everybody in the room loses their fucking mind they they wheeze yeah he is Dave. fucking captured the room with his his fucking wit and it really is like dad's dad's fantasize about getting to tell a naturally occurring dad joke and what i right. mean by that is most dad jokes have a forced setup meaning that mm-hmm. like there wouldn't actually be two weevils in the room right like the dad would have to present a scenario in which there were weevils there would be weevils yeah and, and then you're like well you just made up those rules so you could make the pun right right this yeah. there are actually this two weevils. organic yeah yeah it's just because there's bugs here yeah on the ship yeah and it's beautiful and it's perfect and you can just you can hear the squeaks yeah uh in uh, theaters across across all of america as you know a thousand new balance sneakers readjusted their weight <laughs> on the <laughs> ground and the and they're smiling and nodding just a yep. just a legion of dads legion of them. dads fucking rock hard for this and then the funniest part is later they bring it back but sad someone dies because yeah. he has to he has to choose to save the ship or say or or save this person and he chooses to save the ship and they're talking about it and he's like sadly says the lesser of two weevils (laughs) which is so inappropriate at the point and it's so funny it's like michael scott saying it it's like holy shit man now's not the time a person died motherfucker it's so fucking funny that they brought it back but sad i love that shit it's also like this is like this is Peter Weir shit too. It is. He's the director of this movie. And if you don't know who he is, he did witness. He did dead poet society. Uh, like he, he, he loves movies. this. Yeah. All dad movies. But this is like, 
like if you look at the writing that he likes he loves this shit because it's like oh it's it's it, both ways it means something it's like not really man it's just you you just think it's funny and then you're just like that was such a great moment you let's re- reference the moment again right um, it's like it, it, it's like art that way and it's like it but it's a really inappropriate all right sure go for it man yeah go nuts yeah, um he's he's fine with people not being the coolest because not all dads are cool that's important yeah. you know they're they're rugged and can be cool in a certain way but like some 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 are bad at jokes you know they don't have to all be all good things um speaking of someone who's really good at something that i i wrote down at one point everyone notices how beautiful one boy's voice is yes and i think it does two things one it gives it galvanizes the crew to be like he must be saved at all costs because for he has womanly traits you know like in uh when you're when there's no women gonna, in your movie yeah i thought he's gonna join the band <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. we got a front man and they do the same shit in like lord of the rings because i just thought of it because billy boyd but just like yeah. the idea of uh you know like oh he's got such a soul like beautiful voice this is so sad what a sad moment and then all the dads are like yeah I now feel things because yep. we like our encapsulated feelings, but we don't want to express them. And sometimes we just need a little, a little boy to do it. Right. <laughs> so we're also establishing the cat and mouse stuff with the um, other boat daddy, the mystery boat daddy, which they say it's he's like you, Captain. So there's awesome this mutual dad, yeah. respect, this reverence for the war. We're burning through kids. We're going in the storm, which is a, another dad thing to do. Is ride out a storm um and not mm-hmm. care while everybody's grumbling and worried like at this point st- like tensions start getting high and he has to be the big optimistic daddy now yeah Ta- and again he's using cunning and guile you know like uh they escape uh the french ships uh the or the french ship by sending a boy out as like nighttime decoy for the ship right um and they just tie a rope on it like they just Again, tie a rope around just burnt like they're burnt practically the using kids. the boys for fuel like yeah. they're, they're just like throw another boy on the problem please right and it's like wouldn't want to lose you is what he says to and the kid's like yes sir of course sir but the important part here is and then he like goes into the mist so he, it's like so he's He's using cunning and guile again, top tier dad moves, yeah. because that's the tactic of the underdog. Um, just more to that point. Yep, and yeah, he has to say, he has to like make dad decisions, save 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 one or save them all, right? Um, uh, so they again keep burning through kids, and now we're getting like the conflict, which is his the dad conflict is like his pride, right? Because people are right. starting to say like, do you even have to be chasing this guy? And he's like, right. no, <laughs> our orders were just to follow him to this point, And we already did that, you know? Yeah. We and take him if we can. But it's all in that sink, you know, sink, burn him, get sunk yourself or you take them as a prize. He takes it literally. He's like, that's what the duty is. The duty is that we got to resolve this beef I have with this one ship. Um, yeah. My duty is I'm mad at this guy, this Frenchie. And it's, And it comes right off of the idea of like he does. Yeah, he's like you said, a man went overboard when a smaller like sailing mass falls and he one look to his dad, uh, one dad look to his lieutenant. And he's just like, cut him loose. He'll drag the whole ship down. Yeah, because I think it's important to before the Captain Ahab stuff and the pride stuff. Dads have to make hard decisions. So we understand where he's coming from, even if it's unpopular, because there's a utilitarian code. And there's, in fact, another sub scene like right after it where Paul Bettany explains to Crow that he was in the right because we also need validation. Right. And I think that this pride stuff is, you know, they it's disguised as duty versus like saving that's, more men. I mean, that's the funny thing about this uh, movie is that the overall we talked about it on the the bigger like on the bigger the broader point of the movie is it's the batman right is his pride getting the best of him is he Mm -hmm. too stubborn is he ahab the end is no (laughs) no he's fine so basically it's telling it's telling all the dads of the world like are you obsessed with something that's fine your family's telling you to stop don't listen to them they'll they'll all be impressed when you make that ham radio you know like that that's what it comes down to which is like is he too obsessed is his pride getting the better no end of movie 
That's it. That's the fucking that's the fucking question and answer. Right. And I think there's something in this in that, like, I think men are trained and raised this way. We're trained to like the fault that's it's an obvious fault that you like if you to the letter, if you do the follow the code mentality, that's that's obvious to everyone. But it never challenges the code. The movie doesn't challenge the code. That's not the code's fault. That's his ego yeah. that might be getting in the way. It's always the personal struggle struggle with dealing with the principles, not necessarily right. that the principles are wrong. But everything they're setting up, I fully expected this to be about a doomed ship. Because I was like, right. that's what they're setting up, right? Is like the right. story of this guy's pride. Or I was assuming like a mutiny. That Paul Bettany would have to like take command, make a choice. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought that was where the conflict was going to come from. And in fact, spoilers: there's very little conflict at the end. Um, <laughs> we just kind of kick their asses, and we'll get into that. And it, it just it goes in a completely different direction than what it seems like. They're it, it really is like if Moby Dick ended with them just like, and they got the whale, and it was great. <laughs> and uh, you know, end of story. Like, it's just weird. Um, that's not how Moby Dick ends, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, I know very little about ships and history. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, it just feels like they're they're trying, they're like, they're edging on like a moral, and then they just whiz right over it. And they're like, yeah, never that's, mind. That's, that's the problem with some, like, it can't, because it can't really conflict with the ideals of daddiness you know right. um so we're like an hour into the movie at this point and i want to point out that we're like sailing to the galapagos islands for refuge and right. the movie takes a digression from escape and constant struggle in the escape on the open sea to reprieve um and around this is around the midpoint where we'd have this thing where it's like there's a point of no return and Russell Crowe makes a decision. He's going to go south, southwest again, away from England toward the threat. And we get the struggle between uh, kind of bros during this sequence where Bettany wants to science. But Crowe is like, no, nah, I got to fight the French. And Bettany toils uh, kind of after being told off and is a sad boy in his quarters. Yeah. And and we get this montage where Crowe is like improving the fire rates of his ship and stuff. But um, we get this kind of elongated sequence where it feels like nothing's happening but if you look at what the scenes are designed to do it's all to like just try to pick apart uh crow's kind of identity and what he sees as important and why it's dwindling and he has to hold on but like you said at the end of the movie it's he held on long enough and he was right yeah because there's stuff like the crew starts to develop a superstition that one crew member is like guilty for all their bad luck because they have a, a few days where there's no rain. They got dwindling water reserves, no wind, so they can't even get gone. They do go to the Galapagos Islands first, I believe, right? They 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 go past it, but yeah, there's this whole section where they're like, no, they we're go not going it. there. Yeah, they're gonna, which I wanted to point out because dads... They got to cancel plans. They got to work, champ. They got to like, there work. There's a lot of that where he's like, we can't stop and do war is better than science. Sorry. War, uh, bigger than bigger, symbol. Bigger, science. more important. It's utilitarianism, baby. Yeah. I want to talk about this, this, uh, and superstition. Then, the yeah. Crew this member, curse though. guy. Cause he has to be a commander, right? He's struggling to be a daddy. This young well, man. That's the thing is that when this nonsense magic that the, uh, like the crew is feeling, uh, they're just like, yeah, it's his fault and we yeah. should kill him kind of thing. Crow talks to him and is like, isn't like they're crazy and I'm going to fix it. He's like, it's because you're weak and right. you need to get hard. Uh, so this they'll is, stop um, their nonsense. A which wild is, fucking sequence. Right. Because then after his pep talk, this guy yeah. grabs a cannonball and drowns himself with, first of all, do you not have guns? Like, come on, man. That's a terrible way to do it. But sure, whatever. Um, right. Pick your poison, I guess. Um, and then the death works. <laughs> it works. Yeah, they the like that's another works. poetic it, it just, justice curse. thing. So it's like, oh, I guess he should have killed himself. <laughs> yeah, what? That's, that, it was like he was cursed and he should have killed himself. Yeah, and he Absolutely. was bad commander. He was weak, as Russell Crowe told him. And he killed himself and it was great for everybody. <laughs> 
And there's a one afterthought because then they have a funeral because, you know, he's still one of us. Yeah. And Crow makes a speech to like kind of cure, like to like make it all copacetic. And he actually chastises the crew. He says like, you know, because of your stupid kind of shit, he did this. Uh, but then the wind picks up and we never talk about it again. We never address <laughs> it. Again, they keep hitting, they keep like touching these morals and then making the wrong decision like again yeah. like if this was a tragedy if it was about a doomed ship it would make more sense because they would be like yeah this is all shit that they're you know they're all going mad and they're all making the wrong decisions but in the end they're like it all worked out that guy was right to jump off the ship with the cannonball because it really helped us out because it really helped us out yeah and he did his part and he was a good seaman yeah uh so yeah, we up the notch, uh, you know, like this really f- affects Paul Bettany because he's like, now you're just losing boys for no reason. Yeah. And but again, burning uh, through those children. It's great. And he's like, can I talk to talk to you as like your ship's doctor or talk to you as a friend? And Russell Crowe is like, go ahead, talk to as a friend. And then immediately he's like, no, fuck that. Fuck what you say. Yeah. Because he's like, because. Paul Bettany is like, maybe we should turn around, motherfucker. And yeah. he's like, you've come to the wrong ship for anarchy, brother. <laughs> yeah. Which is just such and a great... he's like, aren't you disobeying orders, Russell Crowe? Yeah, what the fuck? What's going on here? It's anarchy. But, um, it's like, mm. And then, once again, because it's, it's less meanwhile and more, and then uh, there's just... Because magic is in the air, and they see an albatross, and it's also Paul Bettany is like, I am science daddy i want to study this bird and so he's getting all excited and curious and going up to it but you know the whole sailing tradition so of albatross funny. is bad luck and they're like we can't have any more bad luck so one of the midshipmen literally points his rifle and tries to kill the albatross but he hits paul bettany this is paul why he has bettany to do the is, self-surgery he's having a terrible time on this boat it is right. so funny how much they just keep pummeling him this is the funniest thing to happen the guy yeah goes to shoot a bird and shoots him instead Right. And it's like he his face when he shot is like, come on, man, more, and just like, more what of the this. Fuck? Yeah, it's now such an die. avoidable problem that they yeah. have to halt the whole movie for just a bunch of idiots. <laughs> yep. So, he, yeah, the captain is like, all right, champ, you know what? We'll go to land because the surgery can't be done yeah. on the boat because it's too. so he ge- so this is where russell crowe finally like gives up his conquest which again i thought was an interesting turn and like this is it's like okay cool Does he learn something yeah like, no it's just he just loves his boy spoilers so much. spoilers he gets rewarded for this with more yeah. war um more this happens this happens to get them in line with the mystery ship but mm-hmm. for they go but they go to the islands they get to see lizards and shit and look at bugs which is very dad they get to play baseball which is very dad and very drink. dad um, yeah uh i love that also there's a short scene with uh the little boy from rome uh the one who lost his arm um he is now because he realizes that he's like he's 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 armless he's gonna have to use his brain and so he's been kind of throughout the movie kind of under the tutelage of paul bettany and he's given a book of insects he's like i i know you love science and you're bedridden right now but like here's a book of all i'm drawing and it's like pretty good yeah and that's a huge pride dad thing yeah. right it's he's, like my boy is following in my naturalist footsteps yeah, i love him he's science dad he's making him he's making him catch lizards and he says use your hands they won't bite he's yeah. he's being surgery daddy he's ordering everybody around so this is where mm-hmm. paul bettany gets to be science dad and gets yeah. to shine and his big arc is he sacrifices science dad for war dad because he sees the ship he's the one who yep. sees the ship and he's like we have to let open all the cages the leave them. Yeah. we gotta get going um but i'm injured so you gotta carry my ass yeah, he sees the French ship in the cove and he's like, oh shit, ep- expedition is over, time back to duty. So he, he, he understands his duty. He's still a, he's still a, you know, war dad. Right, but, but th- this is where we he get gives the heart, up his right? captured creatures. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a science dad and a war dad giving up. They're, it's like a gym teacher and a science teacher having a friendship. It's like they're, right. they're giving up their passions for each other, is what we're getting. It's a, it, we get to the heart of this movie, which is that it wasn't about a conflict between these two men. It's about their friendship and working out their differences. This working is a, out their differences. It's a parable about dad friendships. It's yep. like, yeah, a science dad, sometimes you have to give up your war for science dad, and sometimes Which, you have to give up your science for war dad. But since it is a war movie, it's mostly giving up science for war. Right. 
there and it's like we get that shit with we you know like you get it with the son you get it with brothers you get it yeah. with your father it's just male figures in your life that you have this camaraderie with right like when paul bettany wanna... sees the other ship he's like god damn it like god damn it and he knows he has to do it and yeah. he's yeah but guess what here's the thing when they get back to the ship science did prevail yep. because they found a little stick bug and that gives and they're like check this bug out that's crazy it acts like a stick and this gives crow the idea to like i'm gonna camouflage the ship and look like a yeah like in order to beat my overmatched opponent i'm now gonna look like a whaling ship they know that whaling ships are around they'll probably try to take us over but they won't open fire yep. at us immediately so we can take our moment and destroy them so, again guile and cunning and this makes sense science dad versus war dad no science Synthesis. and war to make us ultra war and it's it, it's like yeah that's like building the bomb and shit right yeah. like i'm surprised they didn't it's funny that they made him a naturalist because that's like the hardest thing to do if he was like a chemist and like invented you know a new type of fucking explosive or something tang. Like, yeah a tang <laughs> that would be amazing but um <laughs> It's yeah, and then of course they so they pretend to be whalers, and this is and again foreshadowing our next film. It's it's element of surprise, underestimating your enemy, right? It's yeah. oh, you think we're one thing, uh, but we're not. We're not that thing, and we're actually better than you. Wits, guile, fighting dirty, dad, Fight shit. swashbuckling, also baby. attacking the French. Dad. Also, to, yeah, fuck the French. In fact, at one point before he's like, "All right, boys, we're like we're fully camouflaged and we're and, we, and they're coming." And he's like tries to rile them up because it's is like post Braveheart, so everyone's like he's got to give us some kind of speech. Yeah, and he says, "This ship is England." Yeah, <laughs> and that's another important part is like territorialism, you know, and uh, it, it's it's the reason it exists is because it means something. This land, this home, this thing that I have providence and control over, this is what we're fighting for. This ship is England. Mm-hmm. Um, but it ain't a, it ain't mm-hmm. a f- fucking dad war movie without some hand-to-hand combat. So they mount their English flags, they set the cannons loose, they fuck up their faceless enemy, but... Uh, and I, oh, I, wait. I, I, what? They... French dad has his own little plans, oh, right? Because yeah. he's been kind of outdated because they all act, all the French act like they're dead. And then there's a good old swashbuckling. We get a good old sword well, yeah, war. They, so they pretend to be whalers. They get close. And I just can't stress enough how there is never any moment in this conflict where you're like, oh no. Like, but every, like, yeah, they burn true. through another child. Um, mm-hmm. They fe- burn through a few, like, crewmen that we don't really know. Um, and at no point does it feel like we're ever going to maybe be beaten. We just steamroll this other ship because science dad and war dad have figured out a plan that combines science and war. So it's infallible. So we yes. just they it's just a sequence of watching a group of people just murder a bunch of other people. <laughs> murder a bunch of other. With I mean, no, they, they, no struggle. They, they this guy gets shot it's by one. Eye. Imagine the, the last thing you see is a one eyed, one armed child shooting you. Shooting and you're like, son of a bitch. One of them, I swear to God, one of them is fighting with a mallet. Did you notice yeah. that? Like a cartoon that mallet. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just balking him on the fucking head. <laughs> He's just, I no mean, struggle. what you got. Then they Here's just, another quick- they, they hold their funeral afterwards. The French, they don't get a funeral. They have to hold eat on. their dead. Yeah. I have a question about the war. Okay. Are cannonballs grenades? I don't Cause know. Because this, this movie... I, I, I don't know. I've never known. I've never known. I'm ignorant to cannonball design in history, but my understanding is they're just like bullets being fired. They're just an iron yeah, ball. Yeah, so this is... Yeah. <laughs> but I, in this movie, a dude throws one and it explodes. Another time it rolls down the deck and just randomly explodes. I think they do just, have grenades too, on. but it is very confusing, which is like... It's very confusing. Yeah, the way I understand guns and war is that we stabbed people and then we were like, what if we could stab people from afar? And it's like, what right. if we fired a ball really fast towards someone that's like that's, stabbing them? And then over the years, we're like, what if the ball was better and like exploded in their bodies? But apparently so everything is like flammable or explosive. Yeah. So that it, it adds to the wow factor of, you know, otherwise it's just a bunch of cling, cling, cling of swashbuckling. Yeah. Where it's just like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're just f- sword fighting. What's important is that that's boring. I yeah. Guess. What's important is that a child is killed. Yes. Um, that's another important good on part. them. They have. Yeah. They have so you're mentioning it. you're mentioning the uh, the 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 funeral. 
Um, Oh, also, while he's, I also love that as he's walking around the French ship, their, their main brass is also in a band. Yes. Because <laughs> he has sheet music yes. and a piano. Amazing. <laughs> and then they find the captain and the captain's dead. That's important to note. And the doctor is like, right. this, he's dead. He wanted you to have this sword because of respect and whatever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, but not before Crow is stabbed by a French sailor because there's a cost. He's got a blood. He's yeah, got he's fine. bleed a little bit. It's almost <laughs> nonsense because it's he's fine, and it's not like it was an important Again, stab wound. He just gets stabbed, this movie, and then he's like, "Oh, Russell Crow." He acts like a little sad about the death of people, but it's like it's war. So like, I can't stress enough. Like, it's not like a Saving Private Ryan or something where there's right. like this poetic exchange of lives or anything. It's just the commander and his friend fight a little bit and are fine and win at the cost of a bunch of lives, but they learn nothing. And they're just like, yeah, war's great. Isn't it? <laughs> like it's that's what it like, feels like. They're just like, yeah, war sweet. The confidence of this movie to be like, yeah, we don't really have a lot going for us, but we know what a particular audience member really, really wants. Yeah. <laughs> because like, there's not, this movie is actually just a meandering kind of mess. I mean, you're right about like the Paul Bettany it arc and really all that is, stuff. There though. is a structure. It, it is, it, 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 again, it doesn't want to have the arc that it's building towards because it's right. that. And so instead it's just, like you said, meandering because it can't get, it can't do the natural progression. It should because right. it's it just trying to be a, like a war dad movie. It just wants you to see the scenes and feel the feels of like just a bunch of dudes hanging out on ships, man. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And there's the, yeah, there's the funeral. There's the reverence for dead comrades. That's, you know, something that is, this movie does multiple times. I don't know but if it, it's, it's necessary. What it is, it's like the anti version of like a few good men, right? Where the idea of right. movies like that is like when a guy is like, at any cost, we're pointing out like, no, you can't do that. Right. That's the horrors of war. This one, like it's from the perspective of someone being like, no, he's right. You know, you gotta break. You gotta break some eggs. You gotta break yeah. as many child eggs as possible. The small, the smaller, the better. Everything they're building around Russell Crowe is like this is a tyrant. He's taking them off orders on a personal grudge to like prove himself at the cost of so many children. And mm -hmm. Paul Bettany is there to be like, no, you can't. And then the end is like, yes, he can. And in fact, it's good that he did that. Credits. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, that it, it, the movie ends with one more jam sesh. One more jam uh, sesh. So it ends at first with they take, he gives, he finds the next best ponytail and goes, you're the captain of this ship. Um, mm -hmm. And we're taking the, the Frenchy ship that we've captured. We're bringing yeah. it home. You go, you we're go bring up. the, bring the prisoners and we'll go do some, we're going to go to the Galapagos islands and do some fucking science. Cause I, that's rewarding Paul Bettany. And then he realizes he's talking to Paul Bettany and he's like, Oh no! They, they they didn't have a doctor according to like the logs. The, the doctor was doctor dead. Doctor was a fake. So he realized yeah, the it's doctor actually the captain. Yeah, and so he's like, "Turn us around, Dad has to work again." And he's yep. like, "Ah, oh, Dad!" And then they jam, and then, and they, then they jam. jam, and he's like, "You said those birds were flightless. They're not going anywhere." And he's right. That's yeah. true. Very but dad it's joke. like once again. He can Ahab and Bentney can science. We can have it all, baby. We yeah. can have it but all. But it really is like dad on a road trip, right? Where the kids are like, can we stop at south of the border? And they're like, no, we got to keep going. Like, it's all right. that. He's daddy of this road trip. He's t He's gone rogue. They're going to see the grand fucking canyon, whether or not it kills them. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. That's so great. And that's uh, and that's basically the movie there's one thing i had in my notes that i wanted to mention also is that just in general army and navy shit is always perfect for dads because yeah. the, there's this concept that the clothes make the man so it's like anime for us right he wears yeah, they the get colors to dress up and play and the both. medals and it shows that he's a badass even if he's just like farting around for yeah. right now they're in a big wooden he's cock fight yeah. If this were to break out into a fight he would be formidable and yeah. uh, i think that's important because it's a non-emotional hierarchy. It's not a democracy. It's a meritocracy. And I, th I think that's something that I think that's super important for dad movies as we go forward is I'm starting to notice that there's an internal system of poetic justice, but there's also the reverence is kind of taken from this idea that if you do good and you do well, you are 
the best ones. You the just do daddy, those. Yeah. Just do well. Just do good and do well. That's it. Um, and it's this. And the system will hold you up. It's a meritocracy. Just believe. Um, but I feel like that's a good because that's kind of talking about theme. We can kind of move into our next segment. Shall we for retreat? This. Retreat. We're to gonna the... retreat. We're gonna put on our robes. Yep. Grab our pipes as we go to the smoking room mm. and we remark our conclusions about what we learned about the dad tropes. I think the new thing that this introduces that we're going to see a little more of is like science dad. It's kind of mixed science with dad. guile. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a big element here. Um, mm-hmm. Women, there's no dead women in this. Um, but there, it doesn't. The inciting incident is a tragedy, however. But yeah, no, no dead women in peril. Yeah, but there are dead children, so that's that's something. That I mean, on a ship where it's only dudes, I guess that's the closest we get. Um, yeah, and yeah. this thing's got always use guile. Violence is even though it's a war movie, the violence is only only when necessary. But because it's a war movie, it's always necessary. Yeah, and particular. it's always good. The violence is good and fine. And this concept of plowing ahead, stay the fucking course. Stay the course. That's the big like, one here. You have grief? Button that shit up, baby. Do that, your job. It really is like the uh, the idea, it's unheard of, of a dad having to say, I was wrong. Let's go backwards. Like right. that. that's what it is, is stay the fucking course. You cannot, under any circumstances, um, you know, retreat or have Leader- to like, yeah. And it's the paradox of all dad. I mean, it kind of reveals what's it kind of tells the truth, because if you have this concept that leadership is beyond reproach, but you also have this concept of you're an underdog and you're underestimated. That means that you failed or you weren't perfect all the time. And then also you're perfect all the time. So it's uh, to yeah. me, that's just a and I see like that. that. I see that. Yeah, I see that in the stuff we covered already. You know, the fugitive, yeah. it's like he has to prove it. He can't just turn himself in and let the court system work because the court system failed. You know, mm-hmm. um, fucking the, the judge, same idea. It's like it's all about like keep your eyes ahead of you. You stay the course and you, that you'll be right. And I think that's the big thing that's being introduced in this or or highlighted in this that i think Mm -hmm. is a big daddy energy uh we don't really have this concept of sexually being healthy like all the other dad movies work yeah but there is i mean there is piss and shit uh which is kind of related but like the dick stuff it's i mean it's still there though it's just because we don't have female characters in this movie. yeah and it's war so war is like the their version where they're like we don't need sex we have war yeah it's still fertile doing you know, war ships. is another thing that a daddy can do right <laughs> yeah. it's like you can either fuck or you do war um yeah uh, we really get team building because sometimes there's lonesome wolves dads like the fugitive. Yeah. But other times like there's team building like the sports movies we've covered. Yeah. You he's, know, he's like the dad of the crew. You he's know? The, and singing and laughing with the boys is like one of the best moments. And we get a lot of that in this. The one that I want to add to the list because I want to actually it's more of like I want to prove myself wrong because I think I might be right here. Um, and there probably is examples of dad movie. I mean, every dad movie that we, um, kind of cover is we go down this list and it's usually like, it's usually eight, like 80%, but some of them, like they don't reference sport. Well, I guess they do reference sports in yeah, this movie baseball. cause they have baseball shit, but like you, you don't have a, he doesn't have a daughter or he's not a parent, you know, or we don't yeah. know. Like th- there's stuff that we talk about that sometimes it's, you know, you get most of them. But one of the ones that I'm noticing as I'm just looking at the catalog of films that we have kind of on our slate and what we've covered, linear storytelling, dude. None uh, of this yeah, yeah. complex filmmaking shit. Let's just do it chronologically. Yeah. No, I think that's actually flashback shit. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a flashback, get it done in a hurry, dude. We let's yeah. get everything is propelling forward in time simply. And I think that that's, there's something there. I think that dad's like that simple, like let's just a, do one B, simple C, yeah. ABC baby. Let's make it we, stories. You don't need to reinvent the wheel motherfucker. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but like, I don't know, uh, we get the sense of vigilanteism, uh, there's no real authority to challenge, 
Um, this it's or, not he like, is. He's challenging his orders, though. And again, he's, he's not, kind he's of a rogue. His orders. Well, didn't he say they said to follow him as far as some point, and he's like already did that. So he is overstepping. That's his true. Orders. He's, he's overstepping. But but y- usually in these films, uh, or some of these films, there's kind of two categories. One where there is a you know the world there's is wrong. Still this and element. You're right. Yeah, they still do this thing where that that stuffed shirt guy, who I don't even know what his position was, is like, right. "Oh God, do this," and he like tells him no. So they still, despite being the captain, they still give him like a bureaucrat type to be like, "Ah, eat my dick." Like, yeah, it, exactly. It, they still somehow inject a little bit of that in here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there is a feeling of authority. He's, we got to buck some kind of authority. Yeah. Um, because that's uh, that's important to being, you know, like a rogue uh, type. Yeah. Um, you don't disrupt the principles, but you can disrupt like if exactly. someone's corrupt. You can you have disrupt reverence the, you for have the larger ton. system. Nothing exactly. wrong with the large system. But light, these, yeah, light vigilantism. And I think that that's still prevalent in this movie, even though it's more so in other movies. For sure. Um, And obviously we talked about trains and planes and driving around. This one's boats. Uh, So that's a slam dunk. So I feel like this is checking off most of the boxes. Oh yeah. There's only a few. And again, being a war history movie, it's sort of automatically, even if it didn't have anything else, it's automatically like, automatically. It's a dad film. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm. God, I love a dad movie. We love, love dad, dad movie. movies. Mm. Do we want to well, do we want to tell people what the next dad movie will be? Yes. Yes. Uh in a few weeks you're going to get another one of these episodes. We have a volley of 4 coming, but we'll tell you in the next one so you can watch it in the next like 2-3 weeks and uh you know, do your homework. We are covering Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, Kevin Costner, right up in your face. Everything I do, I do mm. it for you. Yes. It's it's the dad fantasy movies. Yeah. Uh, but that's all for this episode, I think. Yeah, uh, it is. That you have been listening to the historical adventure genre, and we chose Master and Commander. Obviously, there's other historical adventure movies we'll probably cover, just like there's other action thrillers. We're not just going to cover The Fugitive. Right. But we want to we wanna show that dad... Dad movies are a genre within themselves because it trans it it uh it basically transcends actual genre. Yes. Like you can have a sports movie or a romance movie or a lot of Yeah, the ones I'm excited for are the ones that you don't think about. Dad kids movie, dad horror movie, dad yeah. comedy is sort of there's a, a, ba- a bunch of those, but I can't wait to start exploring those to see how the, the dad ones. genre transcends the weirder niche genres. Yeah, Not we, niche, but the ones that you don't there. think about. Yeah. There's always a movie because there's, you know, there's dads, there's good money in dad movie making, you know? Oh, so, yeah. There's money so, in them daddies. <laughs> exactly. Well, from these two dads to maybe some other dads uh, out there, you can. You know, there's dads of all types. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode. Uh, is there plugs? Do we do plugs? I can Dave. plug Gamefully Unemployed real quick. If, please, if please. you want to, because this is all on Small Beans, but if you want to check me out more, uh, you go over to the ga- uh, Patreon. Well, just Google Gamefully Unemployed. G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y. Unemployed. We have a bunch of free podcasts. We have exclusive podcasts on our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. We do movie stuff. We do uh, weekly like movie check-in called Hypecast. We do We Just Watch, which is movie reviews. And then we have like fun little ones like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman. Fox Mulder is a maniac. Uh, those are about exactly what they sound like. Check that all out. Will you now do that? And hail Satan. <laughs> and hail Satan. <laughs> the daddy of us all. <laughs>